Both the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro have been updated with the new Apple Silicon M1 chip, but on the surface, it doesn't really look like there's much difference between the two. So let's uncover what's the same and what's different, as well as what I think you should go for. Hello everyone, my name's Mike, and here at Tech Car Moon, we uncover tech at home and in video. So hit that subscribe button if you want to see more, but today let's compare some M1 MacBooks. Now, this is my initial comparison, and until I get both models in, we won't truly know what the differences are, but I want to help those who are struggling to pull the trigger on which model they should go for right now. So let's start with what's the same between both the models. We have two USB 4 and Thunderbolt ports on both models. We have the same Magic Keyboard with one slight difference, which I'll explain in a moment. Both are configurable with up to 16 gigabytes of RAM and up to two terabytes of SSD. And lastly, both have Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0 technology. The webcams are both 720p, but now have better image processing, meaning that we should see better image quality despite the lower resolution. The 13.3 inch screens are very similar at 2560 by 1600 with True Tone technology and wide P3 color. However, the MacBook Air has a brightness of 400 nits and the MacBook Pro has a brightness of 500 nits, meaning that the MacBook Pro is brighter and could be better in sunlight use. Watching media on both are fantastic and having the P3 wide color gamut means that both are great for video and photo editing. There are some differences in the speakers and microphone. The MacBook Pro has stereo speakers with high dynamic range, but the MacBook Air doesn't have a high dynamic range speakers. The microphones are both three array with bi-directional beam forming, but the MacBook Pro states that it is studio quality, meaning that the MacBook Pro will have better sound for recording and video calls, but the MacBook Air still sounds great. The keyboard on the MacBook Pro does have an additional feature which features the touch bar, but as I've mentioned if you know me before, is that I don't really think that you've been missing out if you've never used it before, as it does have a couple of useful features, but I wouldn't say it was a key selling point. The MacBook Air is also slightly lighter by 0.2 pounds or 110 grams. If you didn't know, you actually get two extra hours of battery life on the MacBook Pro over the MacBook Air because it features a 58.2 watt hour battery over the 49.9 watt hour battery in the MacBook Air. This means that the Pro gets up to 20 hours of battery life instead of 18 as it basically uses the same chip in both computers. And speaking of chips, let's get into the performance as this is what really confused a lot of people. So both use the M1 chip, which is an eight core CPU and both have four performance cores and four efficiency cores. When we look at the GPU, the base model MacBook Air has a seven core integrated GPU and the Pro base model has an eight core GPU. However, the Air can be unlocked with the eight core GPU, but I will talk about this later on with my recommendations. So keep watching and also hit that like button if you want me to compare these two models head to head when I get them in. So on the surface, it looks like these two models are basically the same when it comes to performance as they use the same M1 chip, but there will be one big difference and that will potentially be the sustained workloads. The MacBook Pro will theoretically perform at its peak for longer because it has an active cooling solution and the fan can keep the SOC cooler when it's under load for longer periods periods of time. This means that in long render sessions and long exports, the MacBook Pro will potentially be better. The MacBook Air will be good for shorter bursts of rendering and exports, so don't worry about that. But if you're going to be doing much more intensive workloads, then the MacBook Pro will probably be better. So recommendation time, taking into account the pricings of both of these M1 MacBooks, I think that the base MacBook Air will suit most people, in my opinion, for just under a thousand pounds. If you are someone who surfs the web a lot and has Zoom calls and watches a lot of videos and even someone who does a lot of schoolwork on, let's say, Microsoft's Office Suite, then I think that you'll be fine with this base MacBook Air. The thermals won't be pushed in these tasks. However, I will obviously confirm this with my full review and test videos when I get this in. Now, can the MacBook Air handle video editing? Yes, of course it can. And I think it will perform better than the previous year. However, I won't be using it as my primary video editing laptop. If you're mainly editing in 1080p, 
with either Final Cut Pro or iMovie, or you do very simple 4K video editing, then I think that this Mac will work. But only if you do this with about one or two videos a max a month. It will be the same if you are code compiling, for example. So if you're someone who has just started out with code or does some casual coding, then I think that this would be fine. I would say that the eight gigabytes would be enough in the MacBook Air as it's a unified on the SOC. So it should perform faster than last year's model. And my eight gigabytes of RAM in the Intel MacBook Air was absolutely fine. But if you're someone who is video editing 4K constantly with effects and tracking and everything like that, at least more than once a week, and do coding at a very advanced level, then I think that you should spend the £1,300 and go for the MacBook Pro, as I think that this would be best for you. It has an active cooling solution, meaning that the fan will keep the SOC cool when being pushed during export, rendering, and even code compiling. This means that the SOC should last longer without any issues if you keep pushing your MacBook on a almost constant basis. Also, Apple mentioned that the M1 MacBook Pro can edit 4K ProRes video in DaVinci Resolve, which is pretty impressive no matter how you cut it. If you also do a lot of machine learning, I think that you should also go for the MacBook Pro too. I would say that if you can, go for the 16 gigabytes of RAM, especially if you plan on keeping this small workhorse machine for at least five years plus. This will also massively help out with the performance of the CPU CPU and GPU as it just has more RAM that it can access to. This is a first gen Mac SoC for Apple. Despite their experience in other markets, there will be pitfalls and people will judge it and even mock it. But remember the iPad or even the iPhone? People mocked it to start with because it had a few flaws. However, this was the first step. And I think that in two, three years time with the M2 and M3 chips, I think that we'll see something game changing. Right now, this chip is just to solve the poor Intel chips that we currently see in these low end sort of MacBook Air and MacBook Pros because of their poor performance and poor thermals are overall. I will be getting both models in for testing and putting these head to head in the real world. But this video was more for those who wanted an answer right now. Let me know what you want me to test in the comments down below and check out the links in the description to support the channel. If you haven't already, please, Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TechCarmoon. Drop me a like on this video and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. However, if you want to see more from me right now, then you know what to do. Click on these two fantastic videos, or at least one of them anyway, if you want to keep seeing more of me. Anyway, everyone, look after yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.